representative, you are now senator elect. Mm -hmm. Just your initial comments on winning the election. I'm so grateful, uh, Tomas, to the people who who gave me their their support. And everybody's talking about me be getting the hi highest votes, and and I'm humbled by that. Um, but more importantly, for me personally, I, I consider that to be a big responsibility on my shoulders. That that many people believed in me and and continue to believe in the work that I that I do. So I'm very very grateful. Excuse me, I'm trying to get over a cold, but. Um, I'm very, very grateful, honestly, um, to the people who gave me their votes on, you know, whether it's early voting or um, election day, and and I hope that they continue to support the cause. Um, I have thrown my endorsement to Arnold Palacios, the tandem of Arnold Palacios and David Appetine, and I hope, um, you know, I'm asking the supporters. Um, not to abandon the cause and continue to support me in this um, um, endeavor that I have already uh, thrown my support to Arnold and David Appetite. And are you pretty confident with the coalition that the independents have built with the Democrats? You yourself? I'm optimistic. Democrat. I'm very, very optimistic about that. Um, as you know, uh, elections can go either way. But I do have uh, the greatest optimism and confidence, cautiously confident that they will um, be the winners on November 25th. Right, and so as you said, you were the top vote getter, 25.80% of the vote. That's 5,744 people who yes. elected you to this office. Yes. How does the work change? Uh, and how does the work that you've done here at the House transfer over, if, if any? Um, I will continue to be vigilant. Um, in the expenditure of public funds, that's I've committed to that cause. But um, so now we we I want to transition a little bit. Uh, when when I go into the Senate, um, one of my biggest priorities is try to to bring in investors, um, and I do have contacts in Japan who have expressed uh, an interest in coming over to invest in the cinema once all the after effects of COVID and uh, they're somewhat recovered globally um, from the recession, um, they, they have uh, expressed an interest to come over. So I'm hoping that that will materialize. And the Senate is smaller in terms of its size. How do you think your work is going to be different now that you won't have more than a dozen people I don't, around you? I don't anticipate it to be much different. Um, we have caucused, uh, we had an initial caucus meeting um, to form the majority in the Senate, so I'm hopeful um, that we will treat everyone fairly. It's all I ask for. It's all I've ever asked for is that we be uh, given the equal opportunity to, to make changes in the Commonwealth. And that caucus is made up of who? Um, so right now it is uh, Senator Paul, Senator Edith DeLeon Guerrero, Senator-elect uh, Donald Ringlonia, Senator-elect Karina Magofnia, and myself. And so that's a majority? That is correct. That's five out of the nine seats. Are you able to share more of the conversation with the caucus? What are some of the priorities uh, as the majority now? We, we haven't gone into detail on that. Um, it was mainly just to form a coalition um, with the understanding that we will make up the majority in the 23rd uh, Senate. And you've described the Senate in the past as a rubber stamp? Yes. How will you change that? Um, as they saw uh, in my current term as a House of Representatives, um, I will continue to, like I said, be vigilant and hold everyone accountable. I'm sorry, uh, whether you're a relative or not. Um, whether I endorsed you in the runoff. My work remains that I will be loyal to the Constitution. I will be, um, uh, you know, we all take an oath when we are inaugurated to protect and defend the Constitution, and that remains my top agenda. And what are some legislative priorities going in? Uh, is there anything in the Senate that you'd like to get done that maybe you couldn't have done in the House? Um, just to be more... Um, cognizant of the fact that um, political appointees, namely secretaries, 
be fit for the job they're in. Uh, anybody can be qualified. Anybody with a degree can be claimed to be uh, qualified for a position. But is that the right fit for the position you're being appointed to? And um, I think with the new Senate leadership, we will see uh, positions or, or appointees that are you know, fit for the position they're appointed to. And I will not hesitate to vote no on a, an appointee if I feel there is um, something in their background or something that just doesn't fit with the position they're being appointed to. And you were uh, part of the, um, the uh, bipartisan group between the Senate and House when it came to the budget. That's correct. Uh, now you'll be on the Senate side of the budget. Uh, I guess what, what's your approach you know, in future budget sessions now that you're on the Senate side? So? Well, um, it's hard to say right now, but I do believe uh, we can avoid um, conference committees with the composition of the new House that's coming in in January and the composition of the Senate leadership. Um, I, I expect a streamlined uh, and more open communication, really. Um, this term, there was absolutely no communication with the Senate leadership prior to any budget, prior to any bill being passed. So we hope to see a more cohesive and open um, communication between the House and the Senate in the next legislature. Some people are talking about the Senate leadership that you're referencing. Are, are you seeking to uh, be the next Senate president, vice president, or, or anything of that sort? I have expressed uh, an interest uh, in the in becoming the um, Senate president, but of course that is uh, the decision in that we make in the caucus, in the leadership caucus, and I don't anticipate it to be uh, you know, full of resistance. Um, I'm sure we can work things out. I, I really am hopeful for that. And, and why do you want to be Senate President? Because I think uh, I've, we've always advocated that women um, in leadership positions, they need to be in, in leadership positions that where every decision is being made as RBG, the late RBG um, advocated for. And I think it's about time that the Senate um, has a female uh, rep, uh, senior uh, leader. And this is also uh, the first time, at least uh, based on what we know, that there's uh, three uh, female sitting senators. That's correct. And, and it's, you know, interesting because all three are from Saipan. So that's the first time. So we're making firsts in our CNMI history, and I'm excited for, for what the future holds for the CNMI uh, when we continue to elect uh, qualified and, and, and um, educated women into office. It, it really gives me um, such excitement. All right, Senator, uh, I like that's, that's all the questions I had. Is there anything else you want to add to the public watching? Um, other than um, just asking them to please go out and vote uh, um, for the runoff elections, and I ask them to continue to support me. Um, I have endorsed Arnold and Dave, and I hope that they will follow my lead. All right, thank you. Thank you.